Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to our video series on macroeconomic consumption. In this video, we're going to talk about consumption under uncertainty. Let's go. After analyzing our baseline case of consumption under certainty, meaning certainty of labor income flows, let's consider the case where our consumers are uncertain about their future labor income flows. We assume that uncertainty changes the nature of the preferences the consumer has, thus creating a quadratic expected utility function such that the expected lifetime utility is equal to the expectation of the summation of all CT, which is the consumption at time T minus A over two CT raised to the power of two, where T goes from one to capital T, which is our end period, and A is greater than zero. Such a structure of a utility function shows that there exists diminishing marginal utility for our consumption for a given period. The budget constraint for our consumer must satisfy the optimal consumption, that is, the summation of all expected consumption at time t, where t goes from 1 to t, based on the information in period 1, must be less than or equal to the endowment, which is a naught, plus the summation of all expected labor income flows at time t where t goes from one to capital t where uh e1 right which i just said is the expectation given the information available in period one so since our first period consumption is known with certainty we can say that our consumption in period one is equal to one over t right which is all the periods over our consumer's lifetime times our endowment at period zero right to know about a naught plus the expected uh labor income flows based on the information in period one for all other periods we use the euler equation approach and where we set the marginal utility from consumption in our certain period equal to our uncertain period this is because optimal consumption we solve where our marginal utility from consumption in each period are equal to each other so thus we go and say that our partial derivative of our expected uh, lifetime utility with respect to uh, the consumption in period one is equal to the partial derivative of our expected utility function with respect to the expected utility in period t uh, setting these two equal to each other this is again we're just deriving our utility function directly we end up seeing that c1 the consumption in period one is equal to the expected consumption in period t based on the information in period one this is a very general statement like in the case where we said the consumption under certainty is so based on our previous condition we see that the expectation of consumption in period two based on the information in period one is equivalent to the optimal consumption in period one as a general rule and based on the definition of expectations we have uh, the consumption in period t is equal to the expectation based on the information in period t minus one of the, the consumption in period t plus e t where e t is the error term which has an expectation of zero and the expectation of consumption in period t based on the information in period t minus one is equal to the consumption in period t minus one thus we have our consumption in period t is equal to the consumption in period t minus one plus this error term this is Thomas Hall's famous result from 1978, which states that the permanent income hypothesis implies consumption follows a random walk. We can further derive this result from the structure of our model. Consider the case where we are now in period two and the optimal consumption would be similar to what we found in equation one, which is the consumption in period two is equal to one over T minus one, which is the number of periods that are left times a1 plus the summation of all expected labor income flows uh, from period 2 to t based on the information in period 2. Note the fact that a1 is equal to a0, which is our initial endowment, plus the labor income in period 1 minus the consumption in period 1, and that we can rewrite the expectation of period 2 so lifetime income, which is the summation of all expected labor income flows based on the information in period 2, as the expectation of the, all the labor income flows in period one based on the information in period one with the addition of the new information learned between these two periods. We can go and sub this result into our main equation and we get the following. What we see over here, this A naught plus Y1 minus C1 plus the summation of all uh, expected labor income flows 
based on the information in period one from period two to T, right? That is equal to T1, TC1, right? That's from uh, what we saw in our case of consumption under certainty. Um, if you're a little confused about that, just add Y1 to the summation of all expected uh, labor income flows based on the information in period one, and you get the same sort of result. And in short, we see equation four, that our consumption in period two is equal to the consumption in period one plus this difference over here between these two periods. That over here is a error term, and that's exactly what we saw before, which is Thomas Hall's result. So the implications from this model is that our consumer's behavior exhibits certainty equivalence. This means that they consume in the same manner as if there was no uncertainty. Practically speaking, this means that uncertainty has no effect on consumer behavior. In general, for the a general instantaneous utility function, this condition requires that the marginal utility in period one is equal to the expected marginal utility from consumption in period two. Since our model has a quadratic utility function, this condition could be modified where we now have uh, the marginal utility from period one is equal to the utility function, the instantaneous utility function evaluated at, evaluated at the expected consumption in period C2 based on the information in period one. So the main punchline that I want to get to is that the quadratic utility function is the source of certainty equivalence behavior. If our marginal utilities do not come out as linear equations, we cannot extend our condition from equation five, which is our certainty uh, equivalence behavior, to what we have in equation six. So that's our second part in our video series. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.